Do you know what we all have in common? We're all human beings. You know what else we have in common? The experience of negative emotions. It's inevitable. The coronavirus pandemic has cast a dark shadow across the world, forcing many of us to stay in our homes for extended periods of time. Unable to go to events, unable to go to restaurants or festivals, individuals have been forced to face the challenge of coping with this disruption and the increasing stress in their lives. No one can deny the horrible impact of the pandemic. Loss of jobs, loss of loved ones, loss of hope in some cases, Loss of freedoms that we took for granted, such as being able to walk around without wearing a face mask. However, we can take this time to focus on personal growth, even in the midst of a horrendous situation such as what we're in right now. That personal growth that I speak of has to do with a coping mechanism called positive reappraisal. To understand what positive reappraisal is, you have to understand what appraisal is. As Lincoln psychologist Dr. Browner explained to some of my classmates, Appraisal is a way of understanding events and assigning meaning to them. So, because of this, people aren't bothered by situations per se, people are bothered by their interpretations of the events. An emotion is often a cognitive appraisal of a situation. This is why two people can encounter the same situation but experience very different reactions. While using appraisal can be a good tool, Dr. Browner warns that it is dangerous to use it only to focus on the positives. It's like someone saying, quote, just think positively, end quote, as a solution to solve all of a person's problems. We are allowed to be upset. Positive appraisal is for when you want to increase positive emotion. Well, what if you want to generate positive emotions from negative situations? Positive reappraisal is basically cognitively reframing a situation. You have heard of cliches. Look for the silver lining. See the glass half full instead of half empty. When life gives you lemons, make lemonade. Positive reappraisal is not about denying that a negative event happened. It's not about denying that we are experiencing negative emotions as they pertain to an event. It's about positively reframing aspects of a bad situation. That raises the question, what does the research actually say? Does positive reappraisal actually work to boost our mood and improve our overall mental health? Yes. For example, according to a study published in Psychological Medicine, Positive reappraisal in young adults during the pandemic was associated with less emotional distress in the form of less depression, anxiety, and anger. In other words, if you redirect your negative thoughts during the pandemic to more peaceful and positive thoughts, you are more likely to have better mental health. It is noteworthy that this study used data collected both before and early on during the pandemic for a comparison. There is more good news. You practice when you first learn to ride a bike, right? Well, positive reappraisal is also a skill that can be practiced and improved. How do you start? According to Brian Eccles, a music educator, positive reappraisal, quote, challenges us to approach and label discomfort, obstacles, and uncertainty honestly and head on. During difficult times, we need to become aware of the following and acknowledge that a stressful situation is complicated and unnerving. The obstacles and failures we experience are worthwhile. Difficulties and obstacles are opportunities for growth, unquote. According to a Psychology Today article written by Dr. Davis, while you're practicing reappraisal, ask yourself these questions. Were there or will there be any positive outcomes that result from this situation? Are you grateful for any part of this situation? In what ways are you better off than when you started? What did you learn? How did you or might you grow and develop as a result of this situation? So let's practice. We need to remember that we're surviving a pandemic and none of us have ever had to deal with this before. It's a learning experience and we should remember not to be too hard on ourselves. When we can find benefits from adversity, we can improve our outcomes. For instance, limiting exposure to people to stay safe has allowed us to become closer to the people in our household. Some of us have realized spending family time together means something different now than it did a year ago. Most of us have learned to look at our lives in a different way, which allows us to be more mindful of what we do and say. Practicing mindfulness and meditation has helped a lot of us get through these difficult times to allow for meaningful based coping skills. 
When I think about positive reappraisal of the pandemic, I think about how great it was that I was able to pull my son from public education and teach him myself. While the pandemic has been hard, I think it provided me with an amazing opportunity to focus on my son and his education. I was able to figure out his strengths and weaknesses academically, as well as challenge him in ways that he wouldn't have otherwise have been challenged. I love that I was able to take charge of his education. Whether as parents and or students, many of us have adapted and gained from our experiences with our academics during the pandemic. The pandemic, for anybody who wasn't directly affected by its worst effects, was really a good time to literally grind to a halt, stop, and kind of reevaluate what you were doing with your life and why. Because for the most part, a lot of us were just living on autopilot, thinking we were invincible, and then almost overnight we became extremely aware of how delicate our biology is, and a lot of our life support systems, our economic systems, and even our political systems. It was kind of like a sneak peek behind the curtain of how underprepared and disorganized what we thought a smooth running machine really was. I finally took the time to take care of myself and my needs. I also started to become more focused on the little things that make me happy that I maybe was too busy to do. After being at school all day and being exhausted, I'd come home and immediately go to sleep. When I woke up, it'd be dark out. Now I was taking the time to go outside, go for walks, and so on. Those things are important to me because it gives me a chance to decompress, when before I would not feel like it and just want to sleep. Same with goal setting. I've had the time to achieve my fitness goals and become way more serious about it. I've also cherished the moments I have with my loved ones. When we are too busy, we sometimes forget to look at the people right in front of us. As a result of the pandemic, it is safe to say the majority of people have found themselves spending more time at home. However, this time can be spent engaging in activities you would not have had the opportunity to do beforehand. For instance, I can say that I have had a lot more freedom to dedicate to my own writing projects. I managed to make more progress on my novel during lockdown than I had the few months prior. I believe this is significant because some people might view being locked up at home as a struggle due to boredom, when in retrospect, it can be viewed as an opportunity to devote more time to yourself and your personal interests. Sometimes using positive reappraisal as a coping mechanism is not enough to overcome strong negative feelings. We may need to reach out to others for support, professional or otherwise. Lakeland has two apps available for free to students via Google Play and the Apple App Store. Reach out and send Velo. Now, the SciPeta president is going to share some additional mental health resources with you. If you or a loved one are struggling during these difficult times, please remember you are not alone, and together, we are resilient. Personal counseling and psychological services are available to every Lakeland student through the Counseling Center at 440-525-7200. If you or a loved one are seeking substance or mental health treatment services in the community, please call 440-918-2000 to reach the Compass Line, a service of the Lake County Adams Board. Operators can connect you regardless of insurance to services not only in Lake County, but surrounding counties as well. If you or a loved one are experiencing a crisis, please call the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline at one 800 273 82 or text the crisis text line by texting 4HOPE to 741741. If this is a life-threatening emergency, please dial 911.